Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as we gather today together for worship now, and we pray that you would be the master of our worship today, and that you, our King, would receive all the glory and praise which came out from our mouth and our heart. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, as we gather today in this sacred space of Swan Church Church, in this blessed Sunday, we leave you. We give you our humble servant, Pastor Choi, in your loving and capable hands. Grant him strength, wisdom, discernment, as he shepherds this congregation with grace and humility. May your presence surround him, guiding his words and actions, and may your spirit empower him to live with compassion and love. As we gather here, in this your serene environment, love. Let the spirit of love and peace spread to various nations, especially those at war, like in Cameroon, in Ukraine with versus Russia, and Israelis versus the Gazans, Israelis versus the Iranians. And above all, let peace be between North and South Korea, grounding it all in the Korean Peninsula. Love. We come before you with hands full of gratitude for the recent parliamentary elections. Although we were not eligible, we were not eligible to participate directly in the democratic process of choosing the leaders of this country to pilot the affairs of Korea for the next four years. Our prayers were with the citizens who have the opportunity to make choices with you in mind. We pray that you grant them wisdom, integrity, and a heart for justice as they undertake the responsibilities entrusted to them by them. Yet, O oh God, we also recognize the pressing needs of our time. We lift up to you the plight of immigrants in Korea, those who have left their homes in search of safety, opportunities, and a better future. We acknowledge their humanity, their dignity, and their inherent worth in your eyes. Lord, may, you, may your compassion flow through us as we seek to understand their struggles and extend a help in hand. During these new policy deliberations, we humbly ask for your divine intervention. Give wisdom to our policymakers. Open their eyes to see the needs of the marginalized and soften their hearts to respond with empathy and justice. May their craft policies that uphold the rights and dignity of all people, regardless of their nationality or background. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come, and your will be done, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We offer these petitions in the name of Jesus, Lord our Savior. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, come on. Let me say again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. So now I realize that now the real spring has been come with your old clothes. So, um, so how's the weather outside today? Very good, right? But actually, today temperature is almost summer. Almost summer, right? So um, that means the cherry blossom is over it's over this week maybe it will gonna be over this week so I I gradually thank you all of you to enjoy here today and also some people who cannot join here we also now stream the YouTube with the live streaming so you can also join with the uh, live stream app stream uh, with the YouTube so now let's uh, let me share some announcement before we started. So first announcement is now still the visitation ministry is ongoing. So if you're if you didn't meet me yet, so please remind me or I'm gonna text you or call you to make some schedule. So after that we go we're gonna we will get some tea time or we will grab some, some bite and we will chat it and we will share the prayers so that we can um, you should know and share how we are gonna be praying for you. How we gonna be? How can we know? Uh, we should also know that what is your situation right now. So uh, remember that the visitation ministry is still ongoing. And then the next one is uh, 
Uh, the next one is, uh, it's very important uh, announcement. So today, this day, is the 71st anniversary of the Sojourn Church. Today. So what means uh, we have a very special, a very special event in the first floor, in the first floor, not this floor, in the, on the first floor. So after the, after the service, uh, you're gonna receive some kind of rice cake. The church will gonna be serve you, and then after, before you go, if when you go to the first floor, you can see the, uh, you can see the. One kind of uh, photos, photos there, you, so you can take your pictures. So you can your, take your pictures here. Of course, it's free. Of course, it's free. When you go outside, you should pay maybe, uh, maybe, maybe eight thousand or no, 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 no. I, I already took one, but uh, took one, but uh, I'm not, gonna sh I'm not gonna show you, but what? Maybe ten thousand or eight thousand. You should pay for it. But in here, it's almost free. Oh, yeah, can you please? <laughs> like this, like this. You can also see. You can also get it some stuff and items for the pictures, and you can also take take it. So before you go, please enjoy. Please be our guest in the first floor. So uh, you can also join, and you can also take it with your families, of course. And then, uh, so uh, we just join, uh, we just join, and we should also uh, we should also celebrate the seventy-first anniversary of the Seoul General Church. So, and now, um, and now we should uh, share the scripture today. The scripture today is. Uh, Proverbs, Proverbs, chapter thirty, verses seven to nine. If you have a Bible, please open the Bible. If you're not, uh, please open your applications in your cell phones or your tablet. Or not, you can just see the screen in the front. Um, so now. Let's shall we read it together. So let's read it together, brothers and sisters. Start it now. Two things I ask of you, O Lord, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither comfort nor rich, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise I may have too much and so on you and say, Who is the Lord? For I may become poor and skilled, and, and so dishonor the name of my God. God. Amen. Amen. So now, uh, as I say that, as I say that, uh, before before the starting the message, I want to ask you some, something. Um, did you ever see the cherry cherry blossom tree inside in the street, the pink one? Did you ever saw this week? There's many cherry, cherry blossom has been bloomed, right? So many Koreans and many people, they're just standing under the tree and they want to take some pictures. I don't know why, but it looks beautiful, right? But now, but now maybe this week or next week, uh, lately that next week, this kind of tree will gonna be over. Do you know what this meaning is? Do you know what this meaning is? In the Korea, it means the midterm exam is coming for the college student or the, or some, some students in the in the high school or middle school or elementary school. That means now is time of the midterm. So during the time of the midterm or exam, what are you gonna be thinking first? What are you gonna be thinking first? What do you need it more? What do you need more for the exam or your night work? What do you need? Of course, coffee, right? So, so there is a highly popular coffee in the GS25 convenience store. Uh, it was called, it is not selling to now, but before it was very popular. It was called uh, this kind of milk. It's a milk. It's a coffee coffee milk. It was named by Extra Strong Coffee Milk. Then why is it popular? 
Then why do, why do you think this coffee maker is going to be popular? There's only one reason. The character, right? See the, see the left one. Who is in the coffee milk? Who is he? Everyone knows, right? It's Snoopy. It's Snoopy. Everyone knows the Snoopy, right? I like the Charlie Brown. And well, so, so, when he, when he starts to sell it, most of the students, they buy the, this co kind of coffee milk because the Snoopy looks very cute. So as a Korean, they call this milk, they call this milk as a Snoopy milk. But you know that, you know that? Mm -hmm. Did you ever see the review of this milk? All kind of review shown as a painful. You know what? In this milk, it has a many caffeine inside it. Many caffeine has been put in inside the coffee milk. So when this milk came out, uh, despite it's cute with a cute packaging, they are very quite few painful reviews like a uh, sorry Snoopy, can, can you please let me sleep like that? So how many caffeine is in this kind of milk? So if this coffee milk contains 233 milligrams of caffeine. So let's let's just compare with other energy drink. Um, some Korean energy drink like hot six, it contains 60 milligram of the caffeine. And uh, maybe Red Bull, maybe more than 100. But this milk contains 237 milligrams of the caffeine. So that means this coffee milk is four times higher than other energy drinks. So if you buy this milk, if you buy, buy this milk and when you eat it, that means you will not going to be sleeping for that day. So after, after that, after that, um, this coffee milk changed the name. How they change it? They remove the word milk. And after that, that they just called the Snoopy coffee. And then now it changed the design with that. That's the reason why uh, recently we took it. And then um, still it's very popular. And still many students and many people experiencing the overnight with this kind of milk uh, during the exam and when they doing the overnight work. But the point is, where does this radical popularity came come from? It because the surprising combination of the cute Snoopy and cute character and the high caffeine content creates a strong impact on the people. Uh, let's just let's just get back to the scripture. Today's scripture is uh, is describing about Agar's prayer. Actually. We don't know who is the Agar. We don't know who he came from. We don't know what he done. Nobody knows. And the only the part who uh, this man came from inside the Bible is the scripture what we read today, the Proverbs chapter 30. But uh, we don't know him, but in his prayer, in his prayer, we have a lot of things to learn learning about it. And then also, the Angus prayer is the only prayer in, inside the book of Proverbs. Uh, when you read the book of Proverbs, you can, also, you can also see that this kind of book has been written by the uh, imperative forms, like uh, you should do this or you should not do this, only like a commandment. But the only one part, Angus prayer, it's the only the prayer inside the book of Proverbs. That's why the egg, that's why the Agus prayer is the most powerful part in the conveying the message of the Proverbs. So we can see that in the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verses 3, uh, verses 7. Let's read together. Start it now. Two things I ask you, O Lord, do not refuse me before I die. So in this prayer, Agar just asking to the Lord about that, do not refuse me. It means this prayer is something we should remember for the lifetime. 
And also, we should we should see that in this prayer, this is not a uh, this is not a short prayer. What does Agar just do it by himself? We should also we can also see that Agar pray with this prayer in his whole life. That means that Eger, Eger's prayer is the prayer that protects us in, in this weak world, just like the uh, just like that caffeine with the snoopy milk, so combines to create a strong impact. So in this in this day, with this message, today we need to realize through the, those kind of Eger's prayer in the proverbs that there is something we need to remember. It. So. Um, and also that it wasn't just a prayer. And also, Angus prayer is, is, a, it is not just a prayer offered in the momentary crisis, but it's a prayer that Edgar continuously offered throughout in his whole lifetime. So my friends, just remember it. Uh, we need to remember this. As you go to school, as you go to work, or some kind uh, even if you go outside, open the door of the chapel, uh, just our prayer, just remember it, our prayer should be keep on going. So that means you should not just pray inside the church. If you go outside, if you walk, if you riding in the uh, car or vehicle, that prayer should be continuous. Be still continuous. But we should remember the cease praying, always desiring to for our prayers to be answered. But so, but that's something we must never forget it. So let's go inside the point. In the in those Agus prayer, we can see two kinds of things he asked to the Lord. The first one is, the first one is keeping away from falsehood and lies. Let's read verse 8 together. Start it now. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither the property nor rich, but give me only my daily bread. So what does he say to the Lord? Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Then what is the keep falsehood and lie meaning? In the English prayer, this kind of falsehood and lie means the idol worship. He still he, he kept praying for the, to protect uh, from anything that hindered his belief in God. So in says, Edgar was asking God to keep him away from the idol worship. We observe his faith, his faith in the one true God. Uh, we can also find the same context in the New Testament. And also we, what we confess in every way, the Lord's Prayer. Let's see the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 13 together. Uh, starting now. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So lead us not into the temptation. Isn't this the confession we always, always uh, confess it in the worship service, right? Every end of the service. What we do? We always sing the Lord's Prayer before the benediction. Then, what is it that lead us in the temptation? Then what kind of things leads you inside the temptation? Is it money? Or is it relationship with order? Or is it fame and greed? If these things take a uh, take taking you to over God, oh, over God in our heart, then we believe, we should believe that we must guard our faith against it. So now, the world we live in today is often referred to as an evil world. Everyone said this world is going to be like an evil. There's many crises happening. As you can see that this morning in the news, the other war has been begun. You see the news, right? Other, other, other war has been started today. Yeah, Iran, Iran, Iran and Israel. 
But now, with this kind of things, we, we the people say this world is going to be like an evil. So, but now, that means there <coughs> has a too many temptations. Temptations around you. There are so many, uh, so many things, so many kinds make make you test and fails, uh, fail you, making you to fall inside the temptations. Uh, there are so many that we are living in the time where it's uh, it's hard to distinguish what's the temptation and what's the beneficial for us. So that make you makes you makes you confused, and it's influencing the even the youngest children across the generations. So that so what we need to do now is worship, worship, pray every day, and draw close to the word of God to guard your faith. So my friends, uh, our for us, Christian and Christianity are not the people who follow the way of the world. We live in the world, but we are different with them. We live in the inside world, we live in the society, but we are compared, we are different with the others. Even though there are many kind of trials and temptations in our life amidst them, what we must never let go of is our faith. And we believe that this kind of faith, this faith makes us live as, as a Christians. So let's hope let, and let's pray for our, our church and our community. Our English church is a community where people from different languages and different cultures come together as one and we also gather here and we also pray it and we also get try to get closer in the, in the word of God and then we should live as our life as a real Christianity real Christians in, inside our society so what united us that's what being a Christian is all about I believe that and as a member of our church living in the world I strive to cons uh, discern and distance ourselves from the trials and the temptations, hoping earnestly that our lives may truly become lives of genuine Christians. And the other things which are eager as God is the daily bread. Let's, re let's read again the verse 8 and 9 together, starting now. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, Otherwise I may not have, have too much, much so as they say, say who, is the who is the Lord? Or I may become poor as they and so dishonor the name of my God. God. So, actually, human psychology is, is very subtle. When they are poor, when they have nothing, uh, they ask God about the wells, and they ask God about they need it. But and when they are wealthy, when they got it, they say they no no longer need anything else, and they no longer find God. That's the way. That's the way of the human herd. I had nothing. Uh, I. Have, I had nothing, but I had nothing. But um, when I came here in the Korea first time after the life of the Philippines, uh, you know what I carried? You know what I carried? I also one of the same with you all of us, all of you. I had nothing. All I had is the two kind of suitcase, the pack, the bag, the big bag, and the two hundred thousand won not dollar, one, in my bank account. So, what kind of things we can do it is in this country? I have no home, I have nothing, I just have a two kind of bag, two suitcase bag, 
and only 2,001, uh, 2,000, uh, 200,001 in my bank account, what should I do? Can we buy, uh, can you rent some house with, in, with this, this money? Of course not. So finally, my mother, whom you saw before, she helped me to get some, to rent some small house, but actually, but truly, there is nothing inside it. There's nothing inside. Only, only me and the two kind of suitcase. No pillow. Uh, no aircon. There's nothing. But I started to filling up my home with the other uh, furniture and moving more, moving more frequently. I found myself. I wanted more things inside my house. Then, when I move into the Suwon, this place, this place, upon seeing the new house, my first thought was, uh, what should I buy this time? What should I need this time? So, um, with this kind of things, eventually, I realized that I need more money. Uh, I was seeking the God's grace, but in reality, when I, when I prepared this kind of message, this message, I realized that my, for myself, I was seeking what I needed. I was seeking what I need. And after, the, after when, I got, when I get it, when I get it, well, I forgot to give thanks to our God. That's the word of reality in my life. But why, why I share my story is, but you know, the truth is, we do, we do not, uh, we don't need money, and we, we need some wealth as we live, but that's undeniable. However, what Agar earnestly prayed for is, for himself was balance. He prayed not to become a poor, that he would dishonor God through so safe, safe and great, nor so wealthy that he would confess he no longer needed God. So what he asked to God is, he just needs some kind of balance in his life. When he gets poor, he will gonna be asked some kind of need to the God. But when he got, he, when he becomes to the rich or wealth, he will he can know himself. He will not f find the God. So that may, that that's why he asked the daily bread to the God himself. He de he desired to stand in the exact middle, in the center, where he wouldn't deny his need for God. So with this prayer, let's compare with your own prayer. What kind of prayer are we offering to God? What kind of prayer are you asking to God? Are we just asking for what we want and what we need? And if it happens, um, do we have a faith to acknowledge it, ha it as God's working? So my friends, we, the Christians, we shouldn't become richer, we shouldn't become a rich or poor regardless of how our life may turn out, our heart should stand at the center, just keeping the balance, keeping the balance and standing in the center. Mm -hmm. That's what being a Christian is about. We hope to have a kind, those kind of faith. And what we need to remember is other things is, uh, even if our prayers don't don't get answered as we desire, that's, that's also the answer for your prayer. So let's remind yourself, if, you, if your prayer doesn't answer, how you react to the God? Oh God, why? Why are you are not listening to me? Maybe you can complain, but you should remind it. That is also the answer of the God. So maybe, so we honestly hope to become a community that trusts in the God.
even your prayer has been answered or not, or not, just keep promise and uh, keep just keep standing with God and uh, still active in our and uh, still trust God who is still active in uh, your life in our life and responding to our prayer. So let me conclude with uh, with the story through. Abel's prayer, we can imagine what kind of life he desired to live. Looking at looking those kind of two topics, Abel prayed for, the answer becomes very clear. What he wants to ask is, it's none other than the glory of the God. So it may seem like Abel's prayer that for two things, in reality, what he saw was the glory of the God. He prayed not to be, uh, be led away by empty words and lies, to neither be consumed by poverty nor wealth, but to fix his gaze solely on God and give glory to him. Ego lived such a life and he prayed to continue living such a life through his prayers. So my friends, with comparing the life of Abel and his prayer, we should also remember that the believers, the believers in the Christ, the Christians, what kind of life should we live for? What kind of life we should live for? In a life that glorifying God in your whole life. Just like what Abel prayed for, that's what we believe our life should be. Then how do we glorify God? The answer is inside the Bible. In the 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31. Uh, 31, let's read together. Start it down. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all for the glory of God. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do, just it's a reminder not to forget the presence of the God who is with us. Even in the uh, even in the moments of the eating and drinking or sleeping or whatever you've done, we shouldn't forget the existence of the God in our whole life. That's what we must, we should believe that this is the living a life that glorifying God in your in your whole life. So whether our prayer are answered or not, it's a secondary issue. It's not important about your answer answer of your prayer. The result of your prayer is not important. We should just think about in the in the secondary. The most importance in our prayer is glorifying God. And also this is, this is the living as a Christian and the disciples of the Jesus Christ. So, the God who will receive the glory and should present beyond my, our confession and become to the reality. So my friend, uh, with this Abel's prayer, they are truly many ways for us to glorify God as we live. However, the most important thing is to recognize the presence of the God every day. We hope, we hope and I hope that you and every one of us won't forget that. So just as we've examined today, together today, let our life be ones that glorify God. Like Abel's confession and his prayer. So we bless you and I bless you, all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, name of the Lord, to become such member in our church. Should, uh, about that, like Abel's prayer should be our prayer. And as an Abel's life, the glorifying God should be our life and forever and ever.
and also that, also that I also pray and bless that all of you will gonna be, will gonna be, um, will gonna be be the one of the followers of the Christ in your whole life. So let shall we pray. Let shall we pray. Our heavenly Father, uh, like an eager, help help us to distance ourselves from uh, vain things and falsehood, uh, lies and falsehood, and to remember only the God who provides our daily bread, to look only the God, and to live a life that glorifies Him. We thank you especially for granting our church for 71st anniversary. We believe that you, God, you are always with us, will continue to watch over us forever. So please give us the grace and also accept the offering that we present today with the, our joyful heart. We thank everything and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now, um, let's shall we serve the tithes and offering to our God with the song, The Greatest Thy Faithfulness. Anniversary of our church, right? So now, 